Well, the 75-year-old Ali Abdullah Saleh ruled Yemen for more than 30 years. He was accused of corruption and of amassing billions of dollars of wealth during his time as leader of the Middle East's poorest country. His rule finally ended after pro-democracy protests began as part of the Arab Spring in 2012. Hundreds of Yemenis were killed after his government's crackdown on protesters. And just a few years after he was deposed, he re-emerged again as an important player in Yemeni politics after he allied himself with Houthi fighters in 2015. But in a surprise turn of events, he turned his back on his rebel allies in a televised speech on Saturday, formally breaking ties with the Houthis. Right, let's uh, talk a bit more about this with Marwan Bishara, Al Jazeera's senior political analyst. And Marwan, uh, a very sudden demise then for the strong man of Yemen. Yes, um, I don't know if you remember, Martin, but these images remind me very much of uh, Muammar Gaddafi's uh, death in Libya. Although the circumstances are different, but these are the more or less the same, you know, be that as me, he's a human being, painful. Um, images of a man uh, whose uh, name has been tied into Yemen's history since 1978. That's four decades of Ali Abdullah Saleh being one of uh, the dominant figure in the history of Yemen. So certainly a major turning point in Yemen, in Yemen's history with the death of this man, who I would call him a man uh, for all seasons, a man who was able for four decades to change his political colors, to change alliances according to circumstances. Up and until his death, just a few hours, a few days ago, he changed once again his alliances in the hope of survival. So he is the man of survival. Unfortunately for him, after changing his lives seven times, that was it for him today. And. Uh the interesting thing does seem to be that he's being accused of treachery in his final uh, days. His reaching out to the Saudi-led coalition and asking for them to turn a page seems to have been the final straw that certainly put to bed the alliance with the Houthi rebel movement. Yes, we don't know who turned to who. We don't know whether the, the alliance or the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia turned to Ali Abdullah Saleh in order to break his alliance with the Houthis or it was Ali Abdullah Saleh now seeing where uh, circumstances are going and him taking the initiative. Uh, but be that as it may, clearly this has been, uh, the death of Ali Abdullah Saleh is uh, a slap in the face, of course, for those who bet on him yet again. But speaking of labels, uh, Martin, and really especially for our viewers around the world who are not necessarily native Arabic speaking, who are not and necessarily familiar with the intricacies of Yemen or of the Arab world. Let me tell you, I've never seen labels change so quickly as they did in the case of Yemen. I mean, here we have this very particular person in the last 72 hours changed from the deposed president to the former president to the betrayed president and now the late president the dead president. So really labels of radicals and extremists, of terrorists and freedom fighters, of allies and enemies tend to change rapidly in places like Yemen. And so the conflict in Yemen that is sadly wreaking such a destructive toll on the people is not an ideological one, is it? Well, it is an ideological one and it has also these undertones that are not ideological. I mean, in the end of the day, there was an Arab Spring in Yemen. In the end of the day, uh, uh, countless number of people, tens of thousands each day, would turn uh, against the dictatorship of Ali Abdullah Saleh. Uh, and so at one point, it was clear that there it was a, a struggle between oppressed and oppressor, between a dictatorship that lasted since 1978 up and until the Arab Spring uh, a few years ago. And then, of course, it changed again. And with Ali Abdullah Saleh allying with the Houthis, basically their coup d'etat, against the elected government basically in Yemen. Of course, this we entered into a gray area of, uh, of cynical politics, if you will. But to be honest with you now, I think uh, the alliance, uh, you know, United, United Arab Emirates and so on and so forth, are going to try to portray the, the, the struggle in Yemen as that between Republicans, meaning whatever is left of Ali Abdullah Saleh and their allies in Yemen against the Imamites 
or the Houthis and whatever they represent in terms of not necessarily a very progressive vision for Yemen. Now, whether the United Arab Emirates can really claim to be supporting the Republicans in Yemen, of course, that's a whole other uh, ball game. But yes, it's going to be quite muddied. It is quite ambiguous. And we really don't know, even uh, militarily speaking, strategically speaking, anyone who can now say, what does this really mean for the future of Yemen in the next six months or a year or more, is basically kidding themselves. Because we don't know whether the f followers of Ali Abdullah Saleh whether the militarized followers of Ali Abdullah Saleh now are going to join Houthis or some of them, or they're going to turn completely against the Houthis and ally themselves with the others. Because, of course, uh, the, the legitimate and the internationally recognized president of, of Yemen, uh, Hadi, he proclaimed his allegiance again to Ali Abdullah Saleh just uh, days ago. So one wonders what the Yemeni army, what, what is the position of the Yemeni army now? Well, I mean, you know, what Yemeni army are we talking about, right? Because when Ali Abdullah Saleh uh, accepted uh, to basically quit to be deposed by the uprisings and by the processes under international sponsorship that took place in Yemen, he still maintained control on a good number or a good uh, part of the Yemeni army because it, uh, it, it basically owed him allegiance to his person after four decades of being Yemen. And also, by the way, for some of his family members, like his son and nephew and his extended family and his tribe and so on and so forth. And by the way, also, that's why the Houthis were able to be so potent in their uh, military advance and in their ma maintenance of Yemen against the so-called Arab Alliance or Saudi Arabia and the Arab Emirates because they had the help of the military units that were controlled by Ali Abdullah Saleh that was just killed today. So, in the end of the day, how all of this is going now to be broken once again into what allegiances, we actually don't know. What we know for sure is that uh, some of those, uh, the, the, the so-called Congress party, the Ali Abdullah Saleh party's uh, uh, leaders or lieutenants are north of Sana'a. We don't know if there's going to be taken over again by the Houthis or not. What we know, Martin, is that the Houthis now control the capital for sure, uh, some other parts of the country for sure. Whether they will lose more regions that have been maintained by Ali Abdullah Saleh, his, his lieutenants and his, and his tribe, of course, that remains to be seen. But it does, one thing does seem certain, and that is that the death of Ali Abdullah Saleh, who once said that governing Yemen was like dancing on the heads of snakes, uh, is not going to end the fighting in the immediate sense. Well, look, I mean, you know, cliches aside, the man did control Yemen for over 35 years. So really, with a certain uh, combination of alliances and, and certain cynicism, if you will, on the part of his leadership, he was able to maintain some kind of a rule over Yemen. But in the end of the day, the Arab Spring did open a new page in, in the Arab world. And yet, counter-revolution, as it was called, since 1913, turned another chapter in the Arab world. So the changes that we saw happening in places like Egypt, Tunisia, Libya, as well as Yemen and Syria, faced huge, momentous challenges by counter-revolutions and by, of course, certain countries in the region like the United Arab Emirates, like Saudi Arabia and others. And I think Yemen was one of those victims of interference from the outside as well as from the inside. And that doesn't change. I mean, this is the point, isn't it? Removing, uh, uh, admittedly, a very powerful figure in the history of Yemen of the last you know, 40 or so years doesn't change necessarily what the ambitions of those outside players are. Well, at this point, as I said earlier, it is a slap in the face for those who were the last week or maybe two weeks or two months or two years bet on Ali Abdullah Saleh changing allegiance, changing loyalty, and really walking the walk with Saudi Arabia and the Arab Emirates are, of course, disappointed now. And I think, that, by the way, there's a certain, allow me to say, a certain naivete on those who thought that the Houthis were not ready for this. I mean, let's all remember that Ali Abdullah, Ali Abdullah Saleh killed their founding father, the actual father of the present leader. So Ali Abdullah Saleh might have been in a marriage of convenience with the Houthis, but I don't think the Houthis have ever forgotten their revenge or the needed revenge against Ali Abdullah Saleh, and they took it today. So to my mind, the Houthis were ready for a moment like this. The Houthis were ready for the moment when 
Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates were going to buy Ali Abdullah Saleh's allegiance once again in order to turn against the Houthis. What troubles me in all of this, Martin, and I'm, I'm saying that because I know we have a lot of people around the world here listening to us, that this man, the man who was killed today, over the last three, four years, and notably over the last two years, the way he changed his allegiances, while tens of thousands of Yemenis died, just so that he remains relevant, just so that he remains in power, just so that he remains a man that dictates changes for this country. I mean, we've seen cholera, we've seen destruction, we've seen death, we've seen poverty, like we've never seen before in Yemen. And why? Because this man, among other reasons, insists after 35 years of being in power to stay in power. So really the, the, the hunger for power for those dictators, whether it is in Yemen or in Syria, whether it's in Libya or elsewhere, the hunger for power has been so destructive to people in the Arab world and to people in Yemen that it's been a tragedy. Now, once again, what will happen as of today, we don't know, but it's certainly a turning point. And how, how do you think he'll best be remembered? Will he be the man who ch changed his coat more often than most and finally failed to change in time? You're too kind to say change his coat. He's changed his skin more times uh, than anyone could imagine. As I said, he's a man for all seasons, a leader, a Yemeni for all seasons. He changed his alliances too many times. And by the way, it's OK to change one's alliances in politics. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is when you change one's alliances only to maintain power and despite the heavy price in death and destructions for so many Yemenis, so many lives have been sacrificed so that this man stays in power or stays relevant in the history of Yemen. What should we, we be looking for now in the immediate aftermath of this uh, uh, dramatic shift in the situation in Yemen. What should we be looking out for now? I think the most important thing is what to become of Ali Abdullah Saleh's followers and what to become of those who uh, continued to uh, uh, be uh, following Ali Abdullah Saleh. What will happen to those military units that were dependent on him? What will become of Saudi Emirati policy in Yemen now that their main bet on Ali Abdullah Saleh is no more? Will we see a, cha a complete change of uh, orientation whereby people now start talking seriously about political diplomatic solution for Yemen? Or will we see other people, again, in maybe Abu Dhabi and Saudi Arabia saying, you know what, now we have even a greater chance with Ali Abdullah Saleh's people split from the Houthis for us to maintain the pressure on the Houthis in Yemen. We don't know, no one knows. OK, that is the objective, though. Ultimately, then, is it for the Saudi-led coalition to remove uh, the Houthis from their position of relative power, particularly in the north of the country? Of course, that's always been the case. But as you know also, Martin, in the business of political analysis, the last thing that should be on one's mind is predictions, right? So on the basis of analysis of the facts on the ground or the political facts today as we see them, we try to draw certain scenarios. The various scenarios are diplomatic solution and people should learn the lesson that you cannot really just switch certain allegiance around and expect a military solution to bear fruit in Yemen because once again like they like they speak albeit falsely about Syria there is no military solution in Yemen today there is no military solution in Yemen today there wasn't yesterday there wasn't the day before yesterday the quicker they learn the lesson the better the better it is